Hi and welcome back. In today's video we're going to be talking about this ongoing conflict in the EU, especially in the border regions between Poland and Belarus and Russia. This also comprises of a migrant crisis at the moment, so one of my concerns in the last week was that this could have escalated into military conflict between these nations, especially with Russia and Belarus conducting a number of large-scale military operations and exercises is probably the better word along the EU border. And as always with my coverage, if you are easily offended with views that don't fit your own, then don't watch this video because I will be covering all angles here. Belarus border tensions with Poland, Lithuania and Latvia has been intensifying over the last few weeks, with thousands of migrants being used to destabilize the region. That's according to the European Union. Troops have been deployed, nuclear bombers and fighter jets are patrolling the border, and senior officials on both sides, it's not just one-sided, are ramping up the rhetoric. Over the last few weeks, thousands of migrants in Belarus have been amassing at the Polish border, in response, Poland deployed 12,000 troops with water cannons and tear gas to prevent the migrants getting into the country. Shots have also been fired between Polish and Belarusian forces. So let me give you some background to this situation, how it first started and where we are today. In August 2020, the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, was running for a sixth term in office having been in power since 1994. Lukashenko won a massive 80% of the vote, while the main opposition candidate received just 10% of the vote. The results of this election led to widespread protests across Belarus and a violent crackdown by security forces. In response, many countries, including the European Union, United Kingdom, the United States, Canada and Switzerland, refused to recognize the election results, citing fraud and imposing sanctions on Belarus. The EU claims that Belarus's response to these sanctions was to fly in thousands of migrants from Iraq, Afghanistan and Syria into the border region so they could cross between Poland, Latvia and Lithuania. Officials claim that Belarus did this in order to destabilize the region and create a migrant crisis in order to put pressure onto the EU to drop the sanctions. And although Lukashenko denies all of these allegations, there is some pretty strong evidence here showing 40 flights a week flying from the Middle East into Minsk in Belarus. So how have the different countries involved here responded to this crisis then? So we'll start with Lithuania, and they have responded by putting up an 11 foot high uh, border fence with razor wire on the top to stop the flow of migrants. Migrant charities are calling this move callous and illegal, stating that all of the migrants have a legal right under international law to have their asylum case heard. Of course, Lithuania are worried that once they get into the country, with not knowing who these people are, that they could just disappear. A senior Lithuanian official actually goes on further to say, how is it that these migrants speak perfect English, are wearing designer clothing and have cell phones? No one can answer my question. He then went on to say that he believes these are not asylum seekers, but economic migrants making a mockery of the entire asylum system. Lithuania wants to build a 300 mile border fence with Belarus. In August of this year, Lithuania also sent back 5,600 migrants to Belarus and have since prevented more migrants from entering the country. Moving on to Latvia now then. Aside from sending additional troops and fortifying the border further, the Latvian foreign minister has accused both Belarus and Russia of using the current migrant flows as a method of smuggling Belarusian and Russian spies into the EU. Latvian officials go on to say they are concerned that the men trying to cross the border could be coming fresh from conflict in Iraq, Afghanistan and Syria, 
and are concerned for the safety of their own citizens, especially after scenes this week showed what they claim were military tactics being used by the apparent migrants against the Polish security defenses. If you're a loyal subscriber, you know what I'm going to ask you to do at this point in the video. Would you please click the like button? It just helps the video to actually get ranked and seen by other people on YouTube. Thank you. Over to Poland then, where senior officials this week say the Poland-Belarus border was like a war zone. Polish leaders say this isn't just threatening Poland itself, but the entire European Union. Video footage has emerged showing the violent escalation of migrants' attempts to breach the fences this week. Migrant crossings have really ramped up in Poland over the last month, with 17 thousand migrants crossing into Poland in just October alone. Compare this to around 1,000 crossings in the rest of the year. This led to the Polish parliament voting on a $400 million defense wall between Poland and Belarus, which humanitarian charities call insensitive and illegal. Some Polish officials even went on to say, people are being fooled by the fake media coverage these are not your typical migrants. They are well-organized, well-equipped, strong, and agile, leading to concerns that many could be militants or even Belarus security forces in disguise. Polish officials also claim that many media outlets are spreading misinformation regarding the migrant groups being desperate women and children. And certainly the appeal now directly from these refugees is to let them pass let them go through. But as you can see from these determined police officers on the Polish side, they're not prepared at this stage to let that happen. Poland believes the group may contain extremely dangerous individuals, but aid groups claim Polish officials are outright lying and that the group is made up of mainly families seeking asylum. And although Germany isn't mentioned anywhere here, I do feel it deserves a mention and here's why. A large number of these migrants who were interviewed by media outlets said they didn't want to go uh, into Poland or Latvia or Lithuania. They simply wanted to get across to Germany, where more than 6,000 migrants have crossed just in recent weeks. Most migrants see Germany as the safe haven where they want to start their new life, and they see it as welcoming to migrants, with more than 1 million migrants being received by Germany just in recent years. Although this in itself is of an extremely controversial topic and nature in Germany, as many citizens have claimed that with the huge increase in migration, there's been a huge increase in crime. And the one most worrying to a lot of female um, citizens in Germany is the number of uh, crimes of a sexual nature against women. Over to the European Union then. Europe has called the situation the weaponization of migrants and a hybrid war designed to destabilize Western European countries. The other main concern, according to the EU, is that the Allies have been bombing these countries for decades and they have no idea who these men are that were so violently trying to breach the border defenses just this week. The EU matches some of Poland's uh, comments around the media coverage, calling it completely polarized with staged scenes from the quote unquote uh, usual outlets. Um, we're not exactly sure who they are referring to here, but we can probably take a wild guess. is what they say in the text message, is what they say in the text message. Who are trying to improve their situation. Although some media outlets insist that the EU should let these people in and that they are just peaceful groups of women and children. Let these people through and look at them. You know, many of them are children, babes in arms, many families who have come here from various countries, mainly Iraqi Kurdistan, in the hope of getting across into the European Union for a better life in Poland, in Germany, wherever it is they want to go. But the EU leaders and other media groups on the ground 
are giving stories of completely different scenes of uh, violence among the group, violence against the security forces. <laughs> And also they have managed to speak to a number of individuals and these individuals admitted to having paid um, money to get to the border. Nihat and Dahir from northern Iraq. Yeah. They received the uh, GPS pins from card? smugglers to mm -hmm. their phones. Card. And you paid 2,100 yes. euros. Mm -hmm. Other experts are claiming that this group is not simply asylum seekers, that they are uh, illegal economic migrants who are not escaping persecution in their home country. And many are in fact considered wealthy within their country of origin, as could be seen by their clothing and luggage after getting off their repatriation flights on Friday. So this is actually another point just in the last couple of days. There have been a lot of movement on this topic with a number of repatriation flights taking people back home to their countries. Over to Belarus then, uh, the Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko not only denies all claims against him, but is also making fresh new threats against Europe. The most worrying of these, in my opinion, is the threat to cut off Europe's gas supply during winter. He went on to say, we are heating Europe and they are still threatening us. So just for context, two of Russia's uh, main pipelines to Europe actually pass through Belarus. And as you know, on my channel, I've been covering this crisis for you in terms of uh, gas supply and prices and inflation for a while now. So gas uh, prices and supply is a very, very hot and sensitive topic for Europe right now because they know that if there was some sort of conflict, Russia or Belarus could just simply cut off the gas supply. And because of this reason, the EU is being extremely cautious. So over to Russia then, what does Putin, what does Russia say about all of this? Well, firstly, Russia has decided to display a massive show of force on the border. Russia has also deployed nuclear capable bombers to fly near the Polish border. Escorting these Russian planes are Belarusian fighter jets. Belarus says these flights will now be a regular affair. Russian paratroopers are also conducting joint exercises with Belarusian paratroopers along the border. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin has denied any accusations or claims that he was anyway or Russia was anyway involved in the migrant crisis and said he will be more than happy to mediate the situation if asked. President Putin went on to agree and say that he believes that the situation should be de-escalated and is going to speak to the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko. So what happens next then? Well, hopefully a de-escalation will occur, but right now that is looking extremely unlikely. Although Belarus did decide to move the large group of migrants to a nearby warehouse on Wednesday and give them heating and hot food as well as warm clothing. They also arranged for repatriation flights the following day and a number of these migrants actually accepted and flew home, leading to further criticism and claims from some of the EU nations that proves that these were economic migrants. On Thursday, Alexander Lukashenko spoke to Angela Merkel of Germany, who said that she would arrange a humanitarian corridor for the migrants through to Germany. However, the German government was quick to tweet that this is false news. Overall, it's an incredibly complex situation with no easy answer. But I do wanna thank you for watching my video today. And if you would like to send support, food or clothing to genuine asylum seeking women and children, fleeing persecution from their home countries, you can reach out to various aid groups such as the Red Cross and UNHCR for further information. I hope you have a blessed week and I will see you next time.